Hi guys, Get Love Now Summit, Team Easy Daters. We're here and I am so excited. Finally, we get to speak to Carol Allen. Carol, say hi. Carol. Hi. Yes. Hello world. <laughs> and I am so excited that Carol's here because she's going to talk about astrology. And I'm not going to lie to you, Carol. I never truly believed in the whole astrological month thing, but I had to talk to you because you're hopefully going to make me believe, and that's why I'm so excited. So, Carol, I'm so excited you're here. Shocked. I'm shocked. I'm offended. I'm leaving. Listen, you're a nice guy in Hoboken, New Jersey. <laughs> yes. Why would you believe in astrology? You probably have no experience or really bad experience. You've probably been at parties where girlfriends were like, oh my God, what's your sign? No way. Mercury's in retrograde. I can't leave the house, right? Like, that's probably the extent of your experience. Yeah, I think probably I'm like a little bitter because I think oh. I'd find like, they'd be like, what's your sign? And I'd be like, oh, I'm Gemini. And they'd be like, well, I can't date you. And I'd be like, come on, why can't you date me? <laughs> Listen, I'm on a mission to educate those people because that is pop astrology to think like, because you're a Gemini, they can't date you. That's nonsense. Gemini gets a lot of bad press. They think you're you split personality. They think you're, you know, going to have a psychotic break. <laughs> you're schizophrenic because you have multiple personality disorder. You know, it's all silly. Gemini is one of the most talented, awesome, uh, versatile, adaptable, charming signs of them all. So. Yes, and if Carol says it, I must be those things. Yes. But you might not be a Gemini in Vedic astrology because the dates are different. Sorry, oh. what's, what's your birthday? Uh, June 9th. Yeah, you're a Taurus, mister. What? Yeah, what? Whole new identity. You need a whole new self-perception. You need some therapy now. Uh, but yeah, the Vedic system, which is from ancient India, uh -huh. uh, is... is uh, uses different calculations and they actually calculate a, a more in alignment with how pardon the pun no don't pardon the pun with how astronomers calculate whereas the western system is uh, more symbolic and at one time thousands of years ago they had the same dates for the signs but they've slowly drifted apart you know that little children's story about henny penny and the sky falling well, yeah. that's an ancient astronomy story that is uh, acknowledging the fact that slowly over time, the, su the sky shifts from our vantage point. So if you go out every day for centuries on the same date of the year and look at the eastern horizon and look above or look at the western horizon, look wherever you want, but look in the same spot from the same place, the same day of the year over centuries, the sky is going to shift. Well, ancient people thought that meant the sky was falling. What was actually happening is the sky wasn't doing anything. The, the position of the earth was shifting. And uh, the Western system doesn't adjust for that in their calculations, and the Vedic system does. So slowly over, over time, we've just drifted apart. And this is one of the main reasons astronomers think astrology is total hooey. Uh, I actually happen to live on a street where the head of an observatory lives. So he's a, you know, an astrophysicist. And we finally met at a party one day and I told him what I did. And I knew he wouldn't be impressed. I actually said, we do something related, but you won't be impressed. <laughs> and he said, oh, what do you do? And I told him and he said, die, mortal enemy, die. You know, I, I was hoping he was kidding. He didn't laugh. But uh, I said, does it help that I use the sidereal zodiac, which is observable and astronomically literal? And he said no. So, of course, months later, I rescued his dog, and I showed up at his house. And I think he was glad I hadn't died. <laughs> so, but I digress. But, yes, I'm thrilled to be here. What, what can I tell you, you and your lovely Yes. People? So that was an awesome story. Um, you saved a, an animal. All right. So Yes. It and, was in the stars, too, that I would do that. I totally predicted it ahead of time. Kidding. All right. You're, you're starting to make me a believer because you saved an animal. All right. Let's get um, into it. Um, how can we use Vedic astrology to help find love? Oh, my gosh. So many ways. So golly. Where to begin? Well, you know, I was my own first customer. I think most of us who get into this work, 
struggled in our own love lives, probably, I'm just guessing. Uh, but I certainly did. And so I was kind of crawling on my face at a party one day. <laughs> and I met, uh, I met a man that does what I do. And he, uh, a friend had worked with him for over a decade and had just sung his praises to the moon. And he told me about Vedic astrology. I'd never heard of it. And he explained that it was more astronomically accurate. And I didn't care about any of that. I cared that my friend thought he was a genius. And so I had a session and it just blew my mind. And just in my own life, he said, oh my God, don't even try to have a relationship in your twenties. It's just going to be a drama. Right. And when you're 30, it'll all magically come together and the stars will all smile on you and it will, oh, he also said, uh, wow, your chart says you have misery in the arts and so don't try to be an artist. And of course I was in LA trying to be a movie star because that's what is the whole reason for coming to LA, right? And, uh, and so I was totally miserable, like most people trying to be actors. Uh, I was taking my shot and taking my punches. And, uh, and he said, you're supposed to be some sort of spiritual counselor. And I just thought that was the craziest thing I ever heard. So, you know, cut to, I'm 30. I, I get married, like right on schedule magically. And, um, and by then I was a Vedic astrologer telling a lot of people the same stuff, <laughs> telling a lot of people. So, so first and foremost, it tells you not the nonsense stuff like, oh, you're a Gemini, so you know you have a split personality, which is hogwash, by the way. But it tells you really deeply who you are. There's all these combinations that are so psychologically rich and nuanced. And by the way, Western astrology has that too, right? You can really learn about who you are so that your self-love can go way up, right? Your self-acceptance, your self-love. And so that you can also really distill, what do you need in a partner? But because I'm sure you've noticed what we want and what we need are often at total odds, right? <laughs> and are often really in conflict. And so, so, so really learning about yourself. I mean, they, it says at the Oracle of Delphi in ancient Greece, right? It says, uh, know thyself. Well, there was this whole other section of that saying, that says basically so that you then can have like the world, right? So this quest we go on to find love is also to find ourselves and to find self-love. And one of the things we fall in love with when we fall in love isn't this other person. It's who we become with this other person. Like who brings forth the best in us and who cracks open our highest and greatest and who inspires us to up level our lives in a way that makes life so meaningful and so rich and so satisfying that nothing else can touch you know sorry and by the way when i say nothing else i mean love right so you can have other relationships that crack you open too i'm a creative person creativity can do that animals you know we were just talking about animals animals can do that so uh but we really have to lead our lives with love. And so your chart says who you are, what you're here to do, and also when. So it comes with like cycles of seasons and, 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 and timing that's like painful where any attempts you make at love are just going to be frustrating, right? And then, of course, we've all heard like women at parties who would, you know, they had a kernel of truth to say, oh, uh, I can date you or I can't date you with astrology because what astrology does absolutely help us understand is that we do come in with these personalities at birth that go well or don't with other personalities, but it's just not as simple as what sign you are and what sign someone else is. It's much richer than that. And uh, so anyone out there, please don't ever again blow off a perfectly lovely smart, fun, attractive man because of his sign. Like, boy, did they miss out, wouldn't you say, Mike? Yes, I totally agree with that. Yes. Yes. All right, Carol, I want to hear this story, though. Okay. So, like, you just made it seem like, all right, magic happened. I'm 30 years old and I'm married. Bam, it happened. It, so, but magic did happen. <laughs> oh, it did. So how did you meet him? What did you do? Like, let's hear how the magic happened. Okay, well, I had also done a ton of work, 
ton of work. And that's why I, I'm also a coach and not just an astrologer. Because, you know, every great person, I don't care who they are, anyone doing something great in the world had mentors, coaches, trainers, teachers, anything great in life, you need to have, you need to enlist an army, <laughs> right? You need a support staff and, uh, and love is no different. I don't know why we think this most important aspect of our lives should uh, require no help and no education and no training. And, uh, but we're, none of us are taught, none of us are taught. And so the thing that was amazing is when I had that first reading, I was actually already with my husband. He was a boyfriend and uh, I just didn't know he was my husband yet. And he didn't know I was his wife yet. And he was, by the way, never going to get married. He was one of those guys, right? So he would give me the speech. <laughs> and um, because I was 23 and a high serotonin girl, I was like, oh, who cares? Don't worry. I'm not worried about it. You're cute. I'm cute. We're having fun. Who cares, right? And uh, but so, and forgive me, I, all of a sudden I have hair in my own mouth. Thank you gone. It's one of the downfalls of this crazy mane of mine. Um, yeah. So, uh, gosh, I'm digressing. I really, I'm going to kick in, I swear. <laughs> so anyway, so I was already with my, my husband who was a boyfriend, but I didn't have relationship skills. Uh, we both, uh, I had really happily married parents and he did too, but we both came from drama in other ways and trauma in other ways. We both had really painful first love experiences. His first love was kind of Janis Joplin. <laughs> like she would disappear for days at a time to go, you know, shoot up with Jim Morrison. Okay, no, but you know what I mean? She was like crazy. And my first love was voted hardiest partier in school. And so, uh, so yeah, so we didn't have a lot of stability or support in our early romantic lives. And so we both had like big walls up and big defenses and a lot of fear. And so we then wondered why our love life together wasn't so rich. Uh, and, and so that first reading had said, don't even try in your 20s to have uh, a great relationship. And so what we had was a great love and a terrible relationship. Is what we had. And I think a lot of people have experienced that. I mean, have you been there, Mike, like great love where like your heart is singing, right. And your toes are curling and like time stands still and you're absolutely miserable. Right. So, yep. <laughs> so we were absolutely miserable. We were great friends, but we were just, it was just not stable. It wasn't solid. And so we, uh, we ultimately broke up exactly when we both went into like the most painful, what I call love blocking cycle. So we both like both our charts got harder, like three years into our relationship We had this super painful breakup. And, and I thought, well, okay, that's that, you know, I was told that it couldn't happen now. So I'm going to end up with somebody else. That's what I thought. But I, I knew that I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And by this point, people were coming to me for love. So 99% of my astrology readings just turned into big boy girl conversation where everyone wanted to talk about love. And they were really putting so much faith in me. And here I was like a valley girl going like, hey, you know, you're Gemini, you're awesome, right? Like, I didn't have any real wisdom about relationships to share and they wanted to all usually blame the stars or have some sort of appreciation from the stars, which they could get to a point, but it wasn't enough. And so I knew I needed help for myself and for others. And so I went on this quest and, uh, and was so motivated by my own heartbreak because I was really heartbroken when my husband and I broke up. He's very cute. So he did what men do. What do men do? Men replace and women mourn, right? So I cried an ocean and he had a hot blonde wah, 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 girlfriend in like five seconds. And <laughs> I was horrified, right? And so, um, so I cried an ocean and took a bunch of workshops and read a bunch of books and uh, had this huge realization and awakening as to where I had blown it. And I'd, I'd blown it in a lot of ways. So, so ladies out there, any of this sound familiar? You meet a great guy and you try to change him, right? Cause you know, they can always be better. Right? <laughs> uh, you meet a great guy and you, you want to avoid conflict at all costs, right? 
So you don't tell him how you really feel or what you really need. And when he disappoints you, you stuff it and you stuff it and you stuff it. And then one day your hair is on fire and you're a total screaming banshee and he has no idea what the hell happened. Right. I did that a lot. Okay. <laughs> Showed up at two in the morning in banshee mode. And he's like, um, what? Right. And, uh, so I didn't know how to communicate. I didn't know how to set boundaries. I didn't know how to honor his boundaries and let him be him. And, uh, yeah, so I had done a lot to, con to contribute to our relationship, not being so great. So fast forward four years, he's with the beautiful, amazing other woman this whole time they get engaged and I do get over it with like hypnosis, therapy, shamans. <laughs> and I really took comfort in my own chart. Like I knew I was in this painful cycle. And I knew it would end. And I knew I was coming to this beautiful time where truly everything that could line up did. And I mean, I went to a party with 35 astrologers and they all said, oh my God, like Mr. Wright is coming right here. I mean, they all were in agreement, which is not always the case, right? So, um, so right on schedule, like three days into the window, my husband came back, like right out of the movies, said everything, you know, they say in the movies and, uh, and by then I had this whole toolkit that I hadn't had before. So even if you hit good timing and even if, as one of my mentors told me, we had the best compatibility he'd seen, which goes way beyond what sign you are, by the way, uh, in 29 years, even if you have all that, if you don't know how to communicate, if you don't know how to tell the truth, if you don't know how to love yourself, if you don't know how to have compassion and set healthy boundaries, but also know how to pick your battles. If you don't know how to do all that stuff, you're gonna be in trouble, right? So this is where there's like, I call it the will and grace of love. There's the part we can control, which is doing our work. And then there's the part we can't control, which is the larger season we're in. And then the people we meet, you know, relationships aren't just us, aren't just us. It's you and another person. And you maybe feel ready, but maybe the person you're supposed to be with is still on their journey and not quite ready for you. So, so astrology is a huge help and a huge comfort. And yeah, I could go on and on. Can you tell? <laughs> Carol, that was such a beautiful story. And it's great that you got your guy to come back. And I love it. It's it so was crazy. Well, and I will tell you, one of the things he said that blew my mind is he said to me later, like, wow, you have matured so much. And I said to him, no, 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 this wasn't time that did this for me. This wasn't experience that did this for me. It was purely information that did this. Information. And, you know, relationship studies really back that up. We don't need 10 years of therapy to be ready for love. We don't need to heal all our character defects and like become perfect people. We don't, but we do need to know what it does it, what does it take to make relationships work and what does it take to show up fully and really love. And, uh, and that honestly can be taught and that's, what's so exciting. And, and people that are clueless and kind of idiots at it can really become what I call love Jedi's relationship Jedi's. So. Which is why I applaud you, Mike, for joining the fight to like spread the right information. Because there really needs to be one of us on every street corner. Five of us on every street corner. Absolutely. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Carol, so you are like the rock star of the industry and have been crushing it. What? <laughs> yes. Really? Is that the rumor? Is that, that like... It's out there. I love that. It's out there. That's so, awesome. It is. So tell me, like, over the years, you've obviously learned a lot. Like, what have you learned about love from astrology and, and your process of doing this for, for a while now? Wow. Well, now I feel like all this pressure to be, like, the voice of God. What can I say that's, like, going to blow them all away? You know, the main thing I want to tell everybody, and, and for anyone who's ever heard me speak before, forgive me, I pretty much say the same stuff all the time because it's just, what I believe in the most and what works the best. The main thing I want to say to everybody is if you really genuinely have a desire and a, and a real calling for love, it's coming. It's meant for you. It's coming for you. 
And so please try, this is not easy, but please try to love your life the way it is right now. And please try to just worry about your next right steps. Don't worry about the forever. Don't worry about a year from now, five years from now. You know, I talk to women constantly who have the, the, the timeline, right? By 30, this is going to happen. By 35, this is going to happen. By 40, this is going to happen. I'm going to meet the guy that's like this, right? We're going to have this life. I just want everybody to drop all that. What you think is going to happen is so much smaller than what's probably going to happen, right? So let go of your story. You're, you're making it up and fully show up and go from like intending and forcing, right? to like being fully engaged in the process, but also super curious about, ooh, why am I on this date? Ooh, why did this guy write me? Ooh, what is, what could possibly happen here? So if you're on a date and the guy's not your guy and you know it in the first 30 seconds, cause we always do, right? Uh, maybe he knows your guy or maybe he's gonna be your friend's guy or maybe he's gonna tell you about like a book that's gonna change your life. Like, instead of going, well, this is a waste of time, why am I doing this, right? Like, screw, oh, great, another wasted Saturday, right? Or, oh, great, another disappointment. And listen, easy for me to say, right? I've been married for a million years. It's our 20th in five minutes, right? And uh, I got married at 30, it wasn't that late. I talk to so many women that are late bloomers in love where it's like in their 40s, even in their 50s, the right guy comes. So I don't mean to like take away from anyone's pain or anyone's sadness and anyone's exhaustion by all of this. If you're in a lot of pain, you're really sad and you're exhausted, stop. Get a cat, go to Paris, <laughs> see a bunch of comedies, like read Jane Austen and refill your cup. Don't, just, don't stop for too long. Get back. Like don't be gone years, be gone months, right? Uh, but all you have to worry about is the next right thing and then keep an open mind. You don't know. So quit thinking, you know, that's all defense. That's all ego. Quit thinking, you know, and get excited for the, the, the miracles that are going to unfold. Cause if you're really dedicated to this, they will. I love that answer. And I'm such a fan of, um, like, when you go on a date, just be positive about it. Even if you know, like, all right, this is not the person, you really don't know what they may be able to offer. Like, so I have a theory that every person I meet has something amazing to offer the world. And I always like, I want to explore. So if I meet a girl and I'm like, all right, this isn't the one, I'm uh, in a relationship now. But when I used to date, I'd be like, all right, maybe you're not the one, but you have something magnificent. And I'm not leaving until I figure out what that is because I want to see your light shine out of you. So whether, and I've had so many great Facebook. things. Yeah, Facebook. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but I like, from dating, I've gotten like a marketing person that helped me in business. I've um, gotten jobs from people, like networking opportunities. Um, I've gotten referred and I met my girlfriend through uh, someone, like a friend. So like, there's just so many Love opportunities. It. Just ask the question. Love it. Love of it. What you want to know about, like in direct conversation towards things you're interested in. And you're going to find something beautiful about every person and get love referrals it. and enjoy your dates. I love you. <laughs> you're so cool. I, you're a brother of another mother. I love it. Yes. That's the winning attitude really with everything, you know? And, but what does that require, sir? What does that require? Being open. Uh, maybe I'll get it wrong, but being just open-minded and happy in the moment. That's what you're looking for, right? Well, the underlying thing, you're absolutely right. And the underlying thing of being able to be open-minded and in the moment is faith, right? You got to have oh. some kind of faith in the process and faith that you're going to be okay. Really, it requires faith. I don't mean to get preached today, but, uh, but it requires some kind of faith. So just, you know, misery of any kind is always a spiritual crisis. Really. It's a spiritual mm. crisis. And it's valid. Again, I'm not taking away, I'm not invalidating anyone's experience. I've had plenty of misery. It's, a re it's real. <laughs> okay. Uh, and underneath that, we've got to know that it's going to be worth it in the end. It's going to be worth it in the end. And we're all so blessed and life is so amazing and huge. And, and it is better with great relationships. So you yeah. should want them and you should go for them. And, um, and my, I love that Mike. That's so cute. That's great. 
Thank you. Carol, I have the best question for you. Oh, hit me. Here we go. All right, so I believe a body in motion stays in motion. So I what can a woman do immediately, like right now or tomorrow, whenever she wants to start, that's gonna take five minutes to get her going towards finding her true love? That is such a, you are right. That is a fantastic question. Uh, well, so the first thing is just start loving everything. Mm. Start loving everything. Start talking to everybody. You know how they say, you would never judge anyone if you knew their whole story, right? So that guy that's lame online, he's nervous or he's a fisher, right? <laughs> he's trying to steal your money. Like, and why? Because he's in a hut with like starving children. Like anybody's story, there's something you could connect to about it. So, so, so I'm going to go spiritual on you here because I'm probably one of the only spiritual people in your lineup, right? It is. Do it. I mean, everybody's spiritual, but I have the actual spiritual job, right? So everything is love. Everything is frequency. You want more love? You've got to be more love. You've got to bring more love into your cells. You've got to emanate it. You've got to eat it for breakfast. You've got to be, you've got to become the frequency of love. Woo woo. Yes. True. Yes. So five minutes, close your eyes. And think of like the greatest love you've ever known. Do love meditations every, every day. Just, it could be 30 seconds. What's the greatest love you've ever known? Was it a cat? Was it a song? Was it your mother? Was it your first love? Was it, is it somebody in the next cubicle? Like think of that person, put yourself in your happy place. For me, it's the beach in Carmel watching dogs run around. Okay. Like see your happy place, smell it, hear it, taste it, touch it and raise your frequency and then go out in the world and just smile and talk to everybody and you will have 700 boyfriends that fast this is so spot on like i just this is so important like women look at carol and look at how she holds herself and you could just tell she's ecstatically happy about life and because she's so happy that's why her husband came flying back and was like, I need her back. <laughs> we men, me, man, like I tell you how we work. We want to be next to the person that's happy and ecstatic about life. And if you're ecstatic about life, Good we way. gravitate towards you and we have to be around you and we're never leaving your side if you are happy. So what she explained is that and, and watch her behavior. You're right. Like Carol, she's got it going on. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk through the door today because my head is so big after talking to you. Like, where have you been all my life, darling? <laughs> what are you doing later, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the best. All no, right. but you're right. You're totally right. And we want that in girlfriends. And we want that in, I mean, coworkers. Like, life is hard enough, right? I mean, I, look at the people who get everything they want. They still say life is hard, right? Like life is hard. And so like, like try to generate some joy because you will absolutely magnetize and not just love. You'll magnetize opportunities. You'll magnetize the right support. You'll magnetize the right doors opening. I mean, it's better for your health. They've done so many studies on optimists. The, okay. So there's paranoid, right? Which is when you're just sure everything's conspiring against you. There's another word, it's called pronoid. I talk about this in one of my programs, actually. Um, pronoia is when you're just sure everything is working for your highest good, right? Mm -hmm. And people that are pronoid <laughs> are healthier, live longer, make more money, have better love lives, right? So fake it till you make it. If you're paranoid, just observe yourself and flip the script. Like just talk to yourself in a different way. And pretty soon you'll start believing it. Pretty soon you'll start acting like it. Pretty soon, everywhere you go, everyone will want to be your friend or more. So, yes. Well, Mike and I got to go. We're, we're going to go have mojitos now. <laughs> my husband won't mind. Will your girlfriend mind? Probably. <laughs> yeah, my husband will kick your ass, but yeah. Oh, and I'm going to get my ass kicked. All right, we're moving on. Carol, you're fabulous. Um, all right, so what about everyone out there? Like, we, I always get these complaints, Carol, where they're like, all right, I'm doing online dating, and... Um, it's the worst. Yeah, there's no high-quality men on there. I'm getting yeah. terrible messages, or, yeah. you know, I'm 
it, um, is it too late? Like I'm getting too old. Like there's younger, prettier women and um, always. Yeah, the always. Or I'm just frustrated. I work too much or all yeah. these complaints. What do you right. have for advice for these people? Ready? Yes. I don't know why I'm in this mood today. I have French fries and wham burgers for them. <laughs> no, listen, you got to want it. Okay. You got to honor your feelings. Again, if you're bored, if you're depleted, take a break. Right. Mm -hmm. But also mix up your strategy. There are plenty of people. One in six marriages starts online. Internet dating works. If it's not working for you, maybe it's you. <laughs> maybe it's your pictures. Maybe it's how you're interacting. Maybe it's what you're saying. There is literally a rule book for this stuff. There's a strategy. And virtually everyone I know that is a specialist at this, like the stories, you would not believe the stories of like, you know, the rules, right? Of what to do and what not to do. So uh, if, you, if you work all the time, guess who chose that career? Guess who said yes to that job? You did. <laughs> so, um, because you were committed to something, you were committed to having a roof and food and a car and, and good on you. Uh, and the, the same hard work that it took to get that great job and that corner office and that degree and that title and that salary, it might take that in love. I mean, when I say to people, so on a scale of one to a million, how much did you put into your career? Modern women, they always say to me like, oh, a million, right? And then I say, how much are you putting into your love life? They say 12. Well, so why do you think you have an amazing career and a terrible love life? Duh. <laughs> right? so, <laughs> so, and people don't think I'm going to talk that way as an astrologer. They think I'm going to blame it on Saturn or Jupiter or Venus or, and I do both. I really do. I give you the map and the timeline, but listen, in crap cycles, you can still have a lot of fun. You can still have a lot of fun. You might not meet the one and you might not get married and you shouldn't actually if you're in a terrible cycle. Um, but you can still go on great dates. You can still meet amazing people. And that's another thing that I'll see for people. They'll come to me and I'll say, listen, if you're with somebody really inappropriate right now, like they're too young or they're a different religion or your parents will never accept them, great, keep them. Because <laughs> it's, time for the close but not quite love it's not time for the whole enchilada so you don't have to like break up with them because some spiritual mumbo jumbo says well if you're with the wrong person you're blocking the right person plenty of people meet the right person while they're with the wrong person it happens every day yes all day long so you know yes I you're not made of wood you're not made of wood love the one you're with right <laughs> that's right carol you know what's so spot on about that? I love that you talk about people having accountability for everything they're doing. Like, oh, God. Beautiful. I will, okay, I will save you a hike in the Himalayas in the freezing cold with a pickaxe and refried beans. Ready? What is the secret to a happy life? What is the key to life? For real. I love what you just said, Mike. Key to a happy life is taking 100% responsibility for everything in your life, everything, everything, 100% responsibility. Now, does that mean you should be a codependent doormat and expect nothing of anyone else? No, they should also take 100% responsibility for their part and how they're showing up. But this 50-50 idea that we have is totally hogwash. It doesn't work. And this idea that you're a victim is absolutely going to lead to resentment, hostility, you shutting down, you turning off your love, you not being the frequency of love, <laughs> right? So when you take 100% responsibility, uh, your life is up to you and on you. And when you align with the planets and take 100% responsibility, wow, watch out. Yes. You get, you're unstoppable. All right, Carol, I'm going to be so remiss if we don't go back into the thing I'm most uncomfortable talking about. So we have to talk oh. about astrology. So oh. Because I don't understand it at all, but we got to talk about it. So I, I was like, oh, fun. We're going to talk about sex now. <laughs> but, but that no. too. <laughs> that would have been great. Um, next interview, sex for sure. All right. Okay. So in terms of astrology, all right. So a client comes to you uh -huh. and you're like talking about their astrological to come up with a game plan. Walk yeah. me through, like client comes to you, how this yeah. whole process works because I want to get it. 
Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Well, here we go. Buckle up. So uh, they, you get your their birthday, birth time, and birth city. Okay. That shows you the snapshot of the sky from the location they were born at the moment they were born. Okay. Now, that snapshot, this is the crazy part. This is where you need to suspend all logic and reason. And you need to go with me on a little magical journey, right? So that snapshot is the map of your life and the map of who you are. It's a little bit like an MRI in the sky that shows you your whole body or all your DNA or whatever MRIs do. <laughs> so it's a snapshot. And from that, you can deduce who you are, when things will happen, what, you know, what your purpose is, what your, your best jobs are, what your weak links psychologically are. It's crazy. It's crazy. Now, why it works, I have no idea. I just know that it does. I don't care why it works. I just care that it works. And in my experience of 26 years, dude, I've been doing this, okay? 26 years, thousands of charts. It just never, it just never fails. And now does that mean astrologers are never wrong? Does that mean our predictions come true 100% of the time? You know, they say doctors are right 30% of the time. Hello. So does that mean you should never go to a doctor, right? Uh, so it's so sure we screw up sometimes, but it's never the, the fault of astrology. It's always the fault of the astrologer. Astrology is like physics. It is so mind blowingly hard. It, it's not, it's, I wish it was as simple as like, Oh, you're a Gemini. And that means this. Oh my God. It's like, I, I, I if I started really talking astrology, I would put you all to sleep and you would all get a headache. Uh, it's really, really, really ridiculously complicated. I seem like a goofball. This stuff is so erudite and so detailed and so rigorous. And from that rigor, and it's so mathematical, and thank God for computers. We used to do it by hand. I started at the last, last gasp of the by hand time. And five minutes later, I was given a computer. Thank God. Otherwise, I would have quit because it's just... Um, so you get the birthday, birth time, birth city, you sit down and you go, here's who you are. Here's what's great about you. Here's what you could work on. Wink, wink. Um, and here's the timing you're in and here's what you should look for in someone. And here's when, uh, you're in a season of love, you know, ha -ha. and, and then what's am my favorite thing is looking at two charts together, looking at how people go together, how they fit or don't. Because we take that stuff so personally and we go to the, if he really loved me, if she really loved me, then they'd laugh at my jokes. Then we'd have better sex. Then we'd communicate more. Then we wouldn't fight. None of that has anything to do with love for real. You can totally love somebody and be so bored with their sense of humor, or you can totally love somebody and not get your needs met. And, uh, and that the, the compatibility techniques of this system are ridiculously accurate, like blow your mind, like, wow, accurate. So, you know, when somebody like you goes, ah, astrology, what a bunch of mumbo jumbo, right? I want to say, it's like when people say to me, oh, I hate cats. I always want to say you either live with a psycho one or you've never lived with one because they are so amazing. And everyone I know that's ever been like, oh, cats, all they do is me shed and pee and you know when they get one they always come back to me and they go i am so sorry what was i saying <laughs> right so this is my experience with people with astrology when they go ah it's nonsense i'm like ooh, here comes my next most dedicated loyal customer right they just need the experience of it and the real experience of it not the horoscope experience of it or you know the linda goodman god bless her brilliant writer brought legions of fans to astrology. We're all grateful and pop astrology. That's what she was selling. And uh, so when you read about like, Hey, Aquarius, you're only good with Gemini's Libras. And you know, so now you're discounting 75% of the population and saying no to a lot of great people. I, I want to put a stop to that. I just want to put a stop. to that. Mm. So yeah, so that's the process and it's not easy. Mike, I will tell you, I make, I've made a lot of people cry, made a lot of people mad. Cause what do we want to hear? We want to hear like, you're the most incredible person. You're going to make a million dollars in five minutes. Oh yeah. Here's the name and phone number. 
of your husband. <laughs> That's not how it works. He's going to worship you and you will never have a problem. That is what people want me to say. And that is often not what I say. <laughs> so, uh, so they come in all excited and, you know, shiny. And I will tell you, the internet kind of ruined my business because suddenly I had a kind of uh, cachet that I'd never had before when I was just like going to networking meetings and like doing the word of mouth thing. Suddenly I was writing newsletters and I had a book and I had a radio show and so people thought like, oh, Carol Allen must be the voice of God itself, right? So they were so excited to come to me. And that excitement about what I, that list that I just said, people wanted me to say, went on steroids. And suddenly I had a power I'd never had before to devastate, right? <laughs> and to crush people's souls. And so I actually had to stop giving readings because people were too upset. Now, to be fair, a lot of people were also so thrilled and so because I did often see what they wanted like I did say oh wow in six months or wow in a year or wow this guy you love is perfect for you like you know I didn't always I wasn't always the voice of doom <laughs> <laughs> but I just didn't want that responsibility so if everybody watching is like oh I'm gonna get a reading with her oh no you're not <laughs> you're not gonna get a reading with her. but I've created all these awesome offerings where you don't need to, you can do your own compatibility reports. You can do your own timing reports. You can do your own, Ooh, what I call capacity reports or my mentor calls capacity, uh, which is the, the notion of like, yeah, you've met somebody great and they make you laugh and time stands still. And you agree on everything from wallpaper to politics. Uh, but you might still be miserable. Because, oh, gee, maybe that person's a jerk, right? Maybe that person works all the time. Maybe that person is uh, not very affectionate. Maybe that person's totally independent. Maybe that person has an addiction. So compatibility isn't enough. The most important thing is who are you and who are they? Are you healthy? Are you able to vibrate at a high frequency? Are they, right? Uh, and, you know, we all have gorgeous essence and beautiful souls, but sometimes they're encased in these not so gorgeous, beautiful personalities, right? So a lot of us have a lot of work to do and a lot of us are not doing that work. And, but people are on their best behavior for a while. This is why we need one of us on every street corner because you get those phone calls and emails, right? Like I met who was heaven for six months. And that, again, I'm not taking away. That is so painful like the worst, right? To think you've found it, but you haven't, or you have to now walk through fire with this person for a while to get to the other side of something. So like the level of disappointment and heartbreak and betrayal and like of that is no joke. I mean, this stuff is not for the faint of heart. A lot of people put a million into their careers and 12 into their love lives because this isn't for sissies, right? But it's, uh, if you're with healthy people, it's worth it. So I have a report that tells you somebody's capacity mm. and tells you what to watch for so that you're not deluded for the first six months and then like run headlong into a wall of surprise and shock and horror. So yeah, so I have all kinds of fun stuff. So you don't need, you don't need to talk to me. You can do it yourself. And then if you want to talk to somebody, I can refer you to awesome people. Yes. Carol, this has been amazing and i've enjoyed every second of it and i've learned so much and i'm really interested to learn more great but, yes i know you have a free gift for everybody i do uh, yes I do. all right i'm gonna put the free gift down here for everyone so click it carol what are you giving away well and the first person i want to get it is you okay so you have to go get my free gift so what it I'm is in. i'm gonna get it okay and you have to tell all the chicks at parties that you meet that want to like discount you because you're a Gemini, even though now you have a girlfriend. <laughs> okay. So, uh, anyone that doesn't want you to be their love coach because you're a Gemini, you need to give them this free gift, right? So what it's called, it's called the astrological archetypes of relationships. And what I found in giving a lot of readings is it isn't what sign you are that matters. It's, it's like I said, it's much more complicated than that. So there are what are called archetypes of relationships. I actually coined this myself and came up with the five that I saw the most. And they're things like, uh, are you the career woman? 
or career person, right? Are you always just working and only talking about work on dates and only relating from your accomplishments, okay? Eh. Nobody wants to sleep with your resume, right? <laughs> they, that's, they want to connect with you. So that's one of them that doesn't go so good. And then, uh, and then you know, there's the highly sensitive person, which by the way, the best people on the planet, let me just say, are all highly sensitive and that can make you difficult to partner. You can take things too hard. You can be, you know, very emotional. And so, and, and in my experience, highly sensitive people get hurt and then don't date. Like they hide, they avoid, they sit on the shelf, right? So there's three more. I won't keep boring you, but uh, so you can look up your own archetype. You can run your own chart, look up your archetype, diagnose who you are, and then get the remedy because these can all be overcome. These can all be embraced and worked with and supported and each one requires a different kind of partner so it can also help you to know who to look for and then you can run these on the people in your life or the candidates right wait, so wait, wait. i'm so interested can, can you tell us the other three i really want to know yes of course so there's the career woman there's the uh highly sensitive person there's the lady in the tower now the lady in the tower is overwhelmingly i don't know about your business overwhelmingly who shows up at my seminars, who comes to, you know, who used to come for readings all day long. By the way, if they come to my seminars, they do get a reading, I will say, because I screen them and I know they're ready for the truth, right? Um, so there is, a, there is a side door to work with me. You have to come to my workshops. We have a blast uh, and we eat like crazy. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, so the lady in the tower has created this great life for herself. But she believed the lie that love was just going to be easy. It was just going to happen. It was just going to fall from the sky. And that she didn't have to do anything. So the years are passing. And she's got her sanctuary and her cats and her Chablis and her TiVo and her Game of Thrones <laughs> and her friends. And maybe she has kids from a prior relationship, whatever. Like she has full, a full great life. But she doesn't want to climb over the dragon that's outside the door. Like she doesn't want to suit up and show up. She doesn't want to tell her story. She doesn't want to you know, meet another legion of boring dates. She doesn't want to do the work because she's actually got it going on by herself. But on the, you know, so she, she has to be like wooed and she has to be told how to handle the dragon because you will encounter him. I'm sorry, you're gonna, it's just inevitable, right? So, um, and oftentimes the highly sensitive woman turns into the lady in the tower. Those can go together, those two. Then there's the masculine woman or the feminine man. And the masculine woman is like telling men what to do and where to go on dates and what to order and <laughs> giving advice he's not asking for. And, um, you know, relating more from ideas and information than from her heart and her feelings. So she doesn't understand why men just want to hire her or compete at sports and don't want to again, like connect in other ways, wink, wink. So, uh, and then the last one is the most challenging and requires the most work uh, is the woman who believes love is hard or the person who believes love is hard. And, uh, and the, the way to know if you're this person is are you dating somebody married, right? <laughs> are you dating an alcoholic? Are you, uh, are you putting up with things that you swore you would never put up with? If, you're, if your sister or your best friend was with this person or in this relationship, would you support them in staying? If the answer is no, but you're still there, you believe love is hard. Because I said it earlier, it's a faith problem, right? It's a spiritual crisis, right? So if you really believe that like this is an abundant universe, that love is everywhere, that love is available for you, that life isn't a pie, the bigger your piece doesn't mean the smaller everyone else is, right? Like the bigger your piece, the more love you have to give and the more there is for everyone. So, uh, so the, the person that believes love is hard needs to reprogram themselves. Maybe they had parents that were miserable. Usually that's what I experienced. That's what I find. Uh, and they, you know, they can totally turn this around with hypnosis, therapy, you know, subliminal programming, affirmations, stop singing sad songs, stop watching heartbreaking movies, stop uh, commiserating with your miserable friends, like start looking for happy couples, interviewing them, hanging around them, <laughs> following them up, right? And, uh, and get a better vision and commit to it. So, so those are the five. 
And then there's another report, by the way, called the Shazam Report, which uh, is ancient spiritual uh, tools, ancient Vedic tools to ramp up your love life. So these are actual mantras, ceremonies, daily little things you can do to shift your energy that are recommended in the ancient texts of uh, of India that are, sound crazy, but are really, really profound and really healing. And then I give a shamanic ritual that was given to me to help you release attachments to uh, loves of the past. And if you release it, it doesn't mean it can't come back. I am living proof. Okay. It can still come back, but your misery and your attachment and your giving of your energy to it, you'll get your energy back. You'll get your power back. So, uh, so that's very cool. So that's in there too. So yeah. And Woo! all they have to do is sign up for my little goofy newsletter and, and they can unsubscribe anytime. That sounds awesome. I love those five architect, uh, archetypes. I, they're spot on. I've worked with each of those clients and yeah. you kind of covered most of the bases. And I love that with that. That's very, you got everybody. Ah, <laughs> thank you. Well, uh, it just got so I could look at a chart and go, oh, this is the lady in the tower. And she'd walk in the door and I'd say, you're really happy. Your life is rich and full. You never go anywhere. You never make an effort. You uh, keep to yourself. You don't flirt with strangers. Like, and their jaw would be on the floor, right? So I would just name the archetype and describe them to them. And they would say, like, have you, do you have hidden cameras? Are you following me around? <laughs> like, you know? And then I would tell them how to work with it and, and, and how to get what they want. And they would. It's really fun. It's really I love fun. that. Yes. All right. So that free gift is going to be down below. Carol, this has been the most magnificent and wonderful interview ever. <laughs> I loved it. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Oh my God, it. you're my new BFF. I'm coming to New York next month. Let's party. Yes, we're going. Mojitos with Mike. Woo! Yes, it's happening. I'm in. <laughs> All right. Carol, thank you so much. Um, thank you and God bless everybody. Be the love that you are. You can do it. Just take the next right step. Yes. Carol, high five. Great interview. Bam. We did it. Bam. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next time.